Now I would like to introduce our second speaker, Mr. Mohammad Rizvi Shahabdeen. He obtained his Bachelor's of Arts in Specializing in Economics from Loyola College India, Postgraduate Diploma in Development Economics from the University of Manchester, Master of Science in Trade and Development from the University of Lan Lancaster. Mr. Rishwan Sahabdin has vast experience in management, marketing, finance management and implementing policies. He is holding a number of company positions such as chairman and managing director of companies operating in Sri Lanka and abroad, including the brand name Shifani German Jewelry, which is one of the pioneer German jewelry industry in Sri Lanka, which was established in 1970. He has received several awards for his excellence, including Sri Lanka and Singhamani, the highest national award. His name is recognized and listed among the top 100 corporate personalities by LMD. We are very much honored to have you, sir, this evening to share your valuable thoughts. From your experience, we would like to hear the opportunities available within the visitor's economy to maximize spending per tourist. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak to such a eminent, uh, uh, be amongst such an eminent panel of speakers. Um, very honored by that. Uh, I'm, of course, uh, more in the commercial world, and uh, I will give you some thoughts. Uh, mine is not a technical address. Mine are some thoughts arising out of my business. Uh, so my caption today is the visitor economy the opportunities and challenges. As we are aware, Sri Lanka is emerging out of a severe balance of crisis, a dire economic situation, and the government is exploring various uh, avenues to uh, bolster their foreign exchange reserves and uh, increase foreign exchange earnings. So generally, uh, policymakers uh, uh, in Sri Lanka uh, use the usual euphemism, that is, we export ourselves out of the crisis. But it is my view that there is what we call a, a, a low-hanging fruit in form of the visitor economy. When I mean the visitor economy, I mean the tourists spent uh, within the country. Uh, in other parts of the world, uh, like uh, Australia, Malaysia, Singapore. <laughs> Singapore. There is, there, there is a, a master plan in place to maximize tourist spend potential, uh, tourist spend potential within those countries. For instance, if you take Australia, Australia in the year. 2020 earned $60.8 billion uh, from a visitor flow of about 9.3 million tourists. Roughly, if you translate that to equate to per tourist, it's about $700, approximately $700 per visitor uh, spend in, in Australia. I mean, we are talking about Melbourne and the greater Victorian state. Uh, similarly, if you take Malaysia, they had a tourism earning of 190 billion ringgit, works roughly to about 40, 50 billion dollars uh, of uh, tourism earnings. Hence, my proposition to you is that if we were currently Sri Lanka, according to Professor Aslam statistics, on the 2.3 million tourists, we've earned 4.5 billion dollars which roughly translates to less than $200 per tourist visiting Sri Lanka. So the yield per foreigner visiting Sri Lanka is much less than what we would ideally like to have. Now, for in order for us, for us assuming we increase this to about $600, million, $600 uh, through various policy measures, it could automatically translate into $1.2 billion in the short term. And if we can push it up to $1,000, it will be more than $2 billion, assuming we still continue to get 2 million tourists. So two, uh, 2 million tourists spending $1,000, the revenue earns will be somewhere in the region of $2 billion. 
Now, this two billion dollars is, is is equates to perhaps I may be wrong. Equates the net earnings of the apparel sector. Apparel sector earns six billion dollars. Imports constitute eighty percent. The net earnings for us is somewhere in the four billion. Uh, is four billion. So the net earnings is two billion. And this two billion dollars, eighty-five percent of it will be value addition and retained within the country. So these are valuable dollars uh, that could be earned if the proper policies are in in place. Now, how does uh, one uh, achieve this? Uh, given the existing infrastructure we have within the country, uh, the existing uh, capacity, room capacity, uh, and so on. So, uh, if we if we uh, distinguish the two markets, say the European market uh, and the Asian, Indian, Chinese, Middle Eastern as the Asian market, the European market is a is a very sophisticated mature market where the typical traveler has experienced many things in the world. So their travels would often entail uh, whether it's a restaurant, shopping, uh, wellness, tourism, they would always look for something indigenous, something local, but it has to be uh, done in a, in a, in a very uh, efficient way to suit the European taste. So if you were to take uh, restaurants, we have some offerings in, uh, in Colombo, uh, which are reasonable, the Ministry of Crab and a few others. But if you take candy, uh, there is hardly a restaurant outside of the main hotel. Shopping wise, uh, we have, they, again, the preference would be for something in the region, something on the likes of uh, in something indigenous, uh, the, our batik, our handloom industry, uh, which which is something local. So, uh, so th these these sort of crafts and uh, shopping experience are much sought by the by the foreign uh, visitor. If you take the gems and jewelry, uh, I can speak a little bit more about this uh, because I'm in that sector. There we find that uh, there are stores selling various kinds of things, but as an association, we have decided to brand and market the Ceylon Safari. So we address a very narrow segment and say, you, uh, so we make a uh, visitor feel that if he, doesn't, if he does leave Sri Lanka without a Safari, the tour is not complete. So our uh, target focus is that. Similarly, the Asian market, uh, they, they are they are uh, aspirational consumer. Uh, they are they are looking for an identity, and the Indian market and the Chinese market. So, a restaurants are their preferences, uh, and uh, the shopping wise, I think uh, they are very brand conscious. So centers like duty free would would go towards a long way to getting them to spend more. Uh, casinos are already in operation. Uh, so these are sectors that uh, can be expanded to increase the spend. Uh, so ultimately, uh, uh, if we get these two segments of the tourism and get them to spend more, it has an immense impact on the, uh, on, on the spend of the tourists visiting Sri Lanka. Going on, uh, uh, with regard to policies, uh, the visitor, it, it is important to have a visitor. We have a visitor master plan, not only for the country, but for the regions. If I were to touch upon candy, uh, because uh, candy is a place where currently a, a visitor would spend one night. And the, beyond the Nagawa and Peradeniya, uh, the opportunities, uh, the tourist doesn't have much. So what you, we need to find out what, how to expand on the offerings in Kandy so that he's persuaded to stay 
longer than one night. So whether it is a health center or a light and visual audio show of the uh, of King Rajasinghe or something on those lines, where his where his uh, stay is extended, uh, because a one day's extra stay or two days extra stay has an immense impact on the economy of candy. It it trickles down to the the supplier of uh, food stuff to the man who supplies drinks, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I think not only a master plan for uh, Sri Lanka, but each, each area should compete with each other in drawing tourists to stay longer uh, in, in that particular area. Gaul has, I, to a large extent, been very successful. But I think Kandy, Norelia, and even Jaffna, which is neglected, needs uh, some uh, kind of uh, promotion to get visitors staying longer. So I think uh, my proposition today is that with the right, right policy, uh, we can uh, maximize on the visitor spend, and it can have a very positive economy impact on the overall economy of this country. Uh, I won't want to add much more, but uh, I'm very happy to uh, answer any questions uh, later on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your valuable thoughts from your experience. To maximize uh, the benefits of tourism, indeed, we should attract tourists from all around the world. And as you said, enhancing infrastructure facilities is a must. And also the purpose of tourism can be varied, as you said, health, wellness, education, tourism, business tourism, and so on. And also it's, uh, uh, tourists come from various regions, belongs to diverse communities, culture, and uh, religions, and, uh, and the expectation also differ. So we will uh, have a uh, uh, looking, looking to more discussion with our panelists. And if you have any questions, or comments, uh, please post them in the chat box and uh, addressing relevant speakers. And thank you once again uh, for your excellent uh, analysis of the uh, maximization of uh, tourists in Sri Lanka.